What up, this is Rama Screen, covering movies, TV, and entertainment. How's it going, everybody? And here's my review of the series Mr. Mercedes Season 2. Now, excuse me. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I just had lunch. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do this um, with editing or jump cuts or with a prompter. I'm just going to give this to you straight up, one take. Um, mostly because... Season 2 is premiering tonight. That's right, August 22nd. That's today, tonight, uh, 10 p.m. Uh, on uh, AT&T Audience Network, which, by the way, can be found on DirecTV Channel 239 and AT&T U-verse Channel 1114 and via streaming services on DirecTV Now, DirecTV, and AT&T U-verse apps. So there you go. That's for your information. If you're wondering, oh, where can I watch season two? Those are the channels. Um, before I go further, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to AT&T Audience Network for granting me the opportunities to interview two of the actors in season two uh, at this past Comic-Con summer 2018. Actor Jack Houston, who joins the cast as Dr. Felix Babinaugh. And I also got to interview actress Brida Wool, uh, who plays uh, Lou Linklater in season one, and she's reprising her role, of course, in second season. So thank you, at and Audience Network. And for those of you guys uh, who want to watch those video interviews, you can watch it right here on Rama Screen YouTube channel. Um, this review contains spoilers. I repeat, this video contains spoilers mostly because I will be recapping what happened in season one, and of course I will be describing some things that happens in season two. Um, so this review is probably most beneficial only for those of you who are fellow fans of Mr. Mercedes series like me and uh, have been caught up with the, with the story in the previous season. So again, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, this video contains spoilers! Now... Season 2 is based on Stephen King's best-selling Bill Hodges trilogy books, books, which includes Mr. Mercedes, Finder's Keepers, and End of Watch. So it's more of an amalgamation of those three instead of just like Finder's Keepers only. Um, I believe the writers take elements from he, uh, all those three books and put it in this one season, uh, season 2. Um, so that's what you can expect, all right? Um, just a little bit about what happened to, re to refresh your memory. At the end of season one, of course, Harry Treadaway's character, Brady, attempted another mass murder, but it failed miserably, all right? He got stopped. Um, and in the process, he, he got hurt. Uh, so... What you see in season two that he he's gonna be in the hospital. He's in a vegetative state, not in a coma, but vegetative state. And retired detective Bill Hodges tries his best to move on from his obsession with this case. He has trouble doing so, of course. And uh, he teams up with Holly Gibney to open up this new private investigation agency called Finders Keepers. Um, but when unexplainable occurrences happen in that hospital, Bill Hodges suspect that Brady might have something to do with it. So that's pretty much the plot synopsis in a nutshell of season two. Now, AT&T Audience Network only granted me the screeners for the first two episodes of season two. So let me give you the context of these first two episodes, and then I'm gonna give you my review or my opinion of it. Um, the first episode of season two, um, you see Bill Hodges, played by Brendan Gleeson, amazing actor. At first, he, he, he can't seem to let go of his obsession with Brady. He even visits and revisits Brady in the hospital. Kinda, Kind of like how a family member would kind of sit by the bed, you know, uh, by the bed of the patient, trying to read. 
<laughs> something like that. Um, and you see time goes by, you know, day in and day out. He goes in and, and he exits the hospital and he goes back again. And so that's what, what you will see at the beginning of episode one in season two. Um, and there's also a certain tragedy that happens here. I'm not going to reveal to you who the writers decide to kill off, but I feel like it's a good thing uh, because the story of certain characters from season one that you don't need to prolong anymore, any longer than necessary, it's good to just cut that out, cut that off, remove it, uh, to to move the story forward, to progress the story, and also to to show some growth in Bill Hodges, because you know Bill Hodges, the way he reacts to this tragedy uh, in episode one, you know how he's like, oh my god, you know we are get growing older here, you know, so it 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 will it will hit him even more, it hits home even more. Uh, so I think the the certain death or tragedy that you'll see in episode one, I. I to me, it's like okay, that's good. It's 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 necessary. Um, also, in, in episode one, you you get introduced to this character, Doctor Felix Babinov, played by Jack Houston. Jack Houston, uh, who whose performance in Boardwalk Empire series was just phenomenal. Um, and so, without giving too much away, basically, Doctor Felix Babinov. And his character uh, and his uh, his wife Cora, I believe that that's her name, Cora. Yeah, Cora Babineau. They are trying to push for this experimental drug that could help, I guess, neuro neurologically. And so they're thinking, "Ha, huh, we have a serial killer in a vegetative state." He can't, you know, he can't comply. He can't say no. He can't, you know, resist. You know, if uh, who's a better uh, lab rat to test this drug on than him? <laughs> so, so they're trying to uh, unethically go down that route, and that's what you see them contemplating it in episode one. Um, I'm not sure exactly of the effects of this drug. Um, I'm sure it gets more revealed or further revealed in episode three and subsequent episodes. But that's the intention of these two characters. They seem like lovely cap lo lovely couple, by the way, but the wife is, Cora, is more ambitious, more like, you know, the person wearing the pants in the relationship. More like, she's the one that's pushing her husband. Come on. Come on, let let's do this. Let's 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 get rich off of this. Um, so the episode two. Now we go on to episode two. Um, I don't want to. I want. I don't want to reveal too much spoilers here. But let me just say that what happens in episode two, um, it affects. Okay, so Brady, right? What's what's amazing about this episode is that you get to see the kind of like behind the curtains. So Brady might be in a vegetative state; he can't move. You know, he probably can move his eyeballs a little bit. That's all. That's all he can do. And so um, the writers—I don't know. Maybe it's based. You know, it, it, it is also written on the books by Stephen King. But you get to see the world or the what's going on inside Brady's head. And the way the show designs it is that Brady is now stuck in some kind of a basement. And remember, Brady is a computer nerd, right? He's a computer geek, maestro uh, uh, electronics. So that's so this, this basement room that he has, that's basically his brain. So, for example, if... Dr. Felix Babineau tries to shine a flashlight onto um, Brady's eyes, like doctors would, to his patients. And so you see, like, this blinding light shining through the windows of this basement room um, that Brady's in. So he has his all computers in there, and so he's, 
he's seeing through his vegetative eyes uh, by way of his mon computer monitors. It's just the most fascinating thing. It's like the coolest creative choice I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if it's written on the books. I've never read the books, but just from that episode too long, I was like, it was so, you're so immersed in this, in this basement that, that the episode created for Brady. It's like his own little playground now. Now, I believe he's stuck there. I believe he can't get out of that base. I believe he's there unwittingly, but you know, as soon as he realizes, man, I can't get out of this place. He's like, you know what? I'll just make the best of the situation. And that's what he does, right? Because uh, he's got his toys there. He's got his electronics and computers and, and all the gadgets. And so also in episode two, you get to see uh, Brady influencing the attending nurse, the attending nurse that has been taking care of him. You get to see Brady influencing her decisions, her moves. Um, it's like it's like she's under his command, like she's being hypnotized by Brady. Uh, it's like the coolest thing I've seen in a, in a while in any science fiction mystery drama um, on a television scale. So uh, you 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 are in for a treat if you are as big a fan as I am about Mr. Mercedes. Um, the episode two is a treat for you guys. Episode one is a bit slower. It focuses again on 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 Bill Hodges struggling to move on, and this private investigation private investigative agency that he opens up with uh, with his um, colleague Holly. You know, because Bill Hodges has a big heart, so when he takes on some of these cases, these PI cases, you know, some of them even cross paths into bounty hunter territory so what where he tries to track down and capture you know uh people who are wanted or fugitive and there are some of those people where he considers them to be nah, they're not that bad so he decides to let some of them go because he has a big heart you know he he deals with somebody like when you deal with somebody like Brady, somebody of that level of a serial killer, you know, every everybody, every other criminal just seems petty compared to him. Um, so, yeah, that's episode one and episode two in a nutshell for you guys, without revealing too many things. Uh, what do I think? Oh, it's great! It's great! <laughs> it's so great! Uh, I the mystery of this show it, that's what intrigues me. It just hooks you right from the start. You know, you uh, at least for me, I, I I just can't wait to see whether or not Dr. Felix Babineau and Cora, his wife, would be successful or in their effort, or if it would backfire somehow. And if it backfires, how would it backfire? How how badly would it get? Uh, it's just like the the whole setup in this episode, in these episode one and episode two, are just so well structured in a way that makes you in a way that hooks your curiosity and doesn't let go um i suspect that just like season one there'll be some episodes that we can expect in this season two that feels like some kind of a filler but maybe it's there just to just to allow you to further explore certain characters so i'm sure we can expect that also in season two um but in these first two episodes they're pretty straightforward um you don't get to see much of uh brita wall's character lou she's still recuperating you know because she got stabbed by brady at season uh, at the end of season one um but the, you know the the news or the possibility of brady waking up from his vegetative state is something that you can tell in this episode um, that kind of stirs something in Lou Linklater. I don't know if Lou's, Lou's feeling vengeful or he's or if she's feeling sad for Brady. We don't know that yet. We only we only see her here in um, rehabilitation kind of stage. So, but but that's also another. Aspect is like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to turn the page to that chapter to see, you know, what Lou's gonna do to Brady or how she would react to finding out that Brady's, you know, when or if Brady wakes up. 
Um, so yeah, the, the the whole thing. What I love about this show is that it takes me back to how amazing Breaking Bad was. Breaking Bad is not was not procedural. It's a long story arc, and just like Breaking Bad, Mr. Mercedes, especially in season two, in these first two episodes, there are just some awesome creative choices that to uh, just to illustrate. They are there just to illustrate the madness of Brady or the obsession of Bill Hodges. You know, <laughs> it's like performance art at its best. But on a small screen, um, it's it's so fascinating. I, I can't wait for you guys to watch it. It premieres tonight at 10 p.m. Overall, I like these first two episodes. Um, I I hope you guys get hooked as, uh, to it as I am. Um, on uh, to end on an, on this note, the phenomenal performances of Harry Treadaway and Brendan Gleeson that should be more than enough to get you to sit through these first two episodes oh my goodness just the fact that harry has to stay still there uh, st stay still there almost the entire time without moving you know probably just moving his eyeballs a little bit here and there is fascinating <laughs> all right that's it that's my review of my very lengthy review of mr mercedes season two which again premieres tonight 10 p.m uh on AT&T Audience Network, which you can you can find it on DirecTV channel 239 and AT&T UVerse channel 1114 and via streaming services on DirecTV Now, DirecTV and AT&T UVerse apps. Um, thank you again for tuning in and for watching this very lengthy review. Share your thoughts in the comment section below and as always subscribe to my channel and please ring the bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you can support this channel, please do so. $2 per month can go a long way. Please, please uh, support Rama Screen channel at patreon.com slash ramascreen. Sign up, there, sign up there today and become my patrons. Let's rock this.